Sexy Beast is a 2000 British gangster flick set in sunny Spain about a retired safe cracker being forcibly dragged back into a life of crime. Doesn't sound that special or even very original, but allow me to make a case for it, as I believe it is truly a film that deserves more. This fact! It's not sudden. Preparation, preparation, preparation. As far as the actual job's concerned, it's a piece of piss. A monkey could do it. That's what I thought of you. Cheers, Doug. Fun fact starting off, did you know that if you search Sexy Beast on IMDb, first result is this film, but the second result is Chris Jericho. <laughs> that's, that's a little weird. It's kind of funny, but not nearly as funny as the fact that if you search the word creepy on IMDb, the top result is Conan O'Brien. Anyway. What if I told you Sexy Beast was directed by Jonathan Glazer? Does that pique your interest? The same Jonathan Glazer who made the phenomenal Under the Skin, which is a film that I've already talked about at length on this channel. I mean, just check out my Best Films of the Decade video, see how much I love Under the Skin. Jonathan Glazer hasn't actually made many movies. He's done a ton of shorts and commercials and music videos for bands like Blur, Massive Attack, Radiohead, and my personal favorite, Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds. When it comes to films, he's just done Under the Skin, Birth, and this, Sexy Beast. That's three feature films in 20 years at this point. Sexy Beast was his feature-length debut, and what a debut it is. There's such a great grasp on style and tone all right from the beginning. The way this decidedly talky narrative is shown visually goes far above and beyond what was necessary. The dream sequences are iconic, the opening credits are unforgettable, and the soundtrack is perfectly utilized, especially Peaches by the Stranglers, as used in those opening credits. <laughs> Sexy Beast is a heist film of sorts, and it does feature a memorable underwater heist sequence, to be sure, but it's the interplay between the characters that really makes this film shine. But I'm just gonna have to turn this opportunity down. No, you're just gonna have to turn this opportunity, yes. I'm not exactly match fit. Seem all right to me. No, not really, Don. You look fine. I'm not. Do I'm... the job. What? Do the job. No, Don. Yes. No. Yes. No. Yes. I can't. You can. I can't. That can't. Don, don't do this. Do what? Look. What am I doing? This. This? This what? Oh, come on, Donald. There's a boy looking at us. The film stars Ray Winstone in top form as Gal, who is clearly the titular sexy beast. I mean, come on, do I even need to say it? It's so obvious. The always excellent Ian McShane has a great supporting role, but it's Ben Kingsley who steals the show as the downright psychopathic Don Logan. I won't. You will, I tell Ted you're doing it. Don't you show me up. No, I won't be there. You will, you missed the Roundtree. No. Yes, Roundtree. No. Yes, Grosvenor. No, Don. Friday. I won't be there. You will. No, Don. Yes, 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 yes. Forget Gandhi, forget Schindler's List, Don Logan is Ben Kingsley's best role, hands down. He's the perfect encapsulation of chaotic unpredictability. He's the dictionary definition of volatile. He's Tommy DeVito from Goodfellas, plus a mountain of cocaine. He's got so many memorable lines. Seriously, one of, just one of his many monologues has been remixed into two different songs. Not this time, girl. Not this time. Not this fucking time. No! No, 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 no! No! No, 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 no! Not this fucking time! No fucking way, no fucking way! No fucking way, no fucking way! You made me look a right cunt! Not this time. Not this fucking time. Don Logan is genuinely one of my favorite movie characters, period, full stop. The part is played to perfection by Ben Kingsley, who doesn't really have many other roles like this. Not this type of character. Not really, I mean, not this good. It's such an insightful casting choice, honestly. It's pretty outside of the box. And of course, this great cast has great material to work with. The screenplay by Louis Mellis and David Skinto is excellent. The dialogue is sharp and distinct, and the dialogue might remind you of a Tarantino script by way of Guy Ritchie, while also having its own distinctive style. Problem? Fucking problem? No, mate, no. No fucking problem with the plane, cunt. Fucking plane was fine. Fucking plane was all right. Fucking plane was perfect. It's you. You're the problem. You're the fucking problem. You fucking Dr. White, onking, jam rag, arking, spunk bubble. I'm telling you, H, you keep looking at me, I'm going to put you in the fucking ground. I promise you. These two writers would team up again nine years later to pen 44-inch chest, which is not just a badass title, but it's also a solid chamber drama. 
that is also criminally underrated. It's another British gangster flick. This time could find you a single location on a smaller budget and it brought some of the same cast back together. And added in John Hurt and Tom Wilkinson. Holy hell. Uh, but maybe that's a video for another time. Sexy Beast is an excellent film and it deserves more respect. Look at your fucking suntan. Like leather. Like a leather man. Your skin. You can make a fucking suitcase out of you. Old or. Look like a crocodile, fat crocodile, fat bastard. You look like fucking EDR you know what I mean? Thanks for watching what I plan to be the start of a new series. I always enjoy looking back at and highlighting underrated and or underseen films, but I wanted a specific format to package this type of video in, and I think this is it. This kind of more fast-paced but retrospective kind of video. If you enjoyed the video, then do me a favor and share it around and subscribe to the channel. Did this convince you to watch Sexy Beast, or have you already seen it and love it as much as I do? And if you want more videos like this to watch, then you can check out the videos I did on Hard Target and Maniac, which can sort of retroactively be considered part of this series. So check those out before you comment something stupid. This is just my voice. It's what I sound like. Get over it or go away. Back here the whole summer. Well, what about